Hi, welcome to Qualitative Description of the Random Walk. In this video, we're going to give a qualitative discussion of a random walk. We'll use pictures and plots to describe the behavior of a random walk with many steps. We'll leave the math out of this video, but we'll point to other videos where things are worked out in detail. So you can use this video as a jumping off point to learn more. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so let's say we have an object located at x equals zero. It moves in a series of steps, either to the right toward plus x or to the left toward minus x. The steps are always the same size of one unit. It moves to the left or right randomly with equal probability and the steps are independent. Our goal is to figure out the probability of the object being at a particular location after n steps. So the object starts at x equals zero. After one step, it can be at either x equals minus one or x equals one. After two steps, it can be at x equals minus two, x equals zero, or x equals two. And after three steps, it can be at x equals minus three, x equals minus one, x equals one, or x equals three. So after n steps, the object can be at positions ranging from x equals minus n to x equals plus n. However, there are different numbers of paths leading to different ending locations. Let's look at a couple of examples, n equals two and n equals three. So for n equals two, there is only one path that leads to the object ending up at x equals two. The object must go to the right toward positive x on both the first and second step. And the analogous is true for the object arriving at x equals minus two. However, there are two paths that lead to x equals zero. The object can go to the right and then to the left, or it can go to the left and then to the right. Similarly, for n equals three, there is one path that leads to x equals three and there is also only one path that leads to x equals minus three. However, there are three paths that lead to the ending location x equals one. So the object can go to the right, to the right, and then to the left, or it can go to the right, then to the left, then to the right, or it can go to the left, then to the right, and then to the right again. And the analogous situation holds for the object ending up at x equals minus one. After n steps, the object can be located as many as n steps away from its origin. But there are more paths that lead to the object ending up near x equals zero than there are for the object ending up near x equals plus or minus n. So it is much more likely for the object to end up near x equals zero than near x equals minus n or x equals plus n. Let's take a look at some plots. So first let's look at the location of the object after one step. So that's n equals one. Here we plot the probability for the object to end up at a given location. The object can be at either x equals minus one or x equals plus one with equal probability of one half. After two steps, so for n equals two, the object can be at x equals minus two, x equals zero, or x equals plus two. Now we saw that one path leads to each of the possibilities x equals plus or minus two while two paths lead to the object ending up at x equals zero. 
So the probabilities for the three locations, x equals minus 2, 0, and 2, are 1 quarter, 1 half, and 1 quarter, respectively. After three steps, so n equals 3, the object can end up at x equals minus 3, minus 1, plus 1, or plus 3. Now we saw that one path leads to each of the possibilities x equals plus and minus 3, and that three paths lead to each of the possibilities x equals plus and minus 1. So the probabilities end up being 1 eighth, 3 eighths, 3 eighths, and 1 eighth. Okay, so after five steps, so n equals 5, the possible values are x equals plus or minus 5, x equals plus or minus 3, and x equals plus or minus 1, and the distribution is centered at x equals 0. The object is more likely to end up near x equals 0 than near x equals plus or minus 5. Here we show the distribution for n equals 10. The possible values range from x equals minus 10 to x equals 10. Okay, now on to n equals 20. So as n gets large, the distribution starts to become bell-shaped. The shape it approaches is called a Gaussian distribution, or a normal distribution. And now we give the result for the case n equals 100. So we plot the probabilities for the random walk in blue, as before. We also plot a Gaussian distribution in red for comparison. A Gaussian is a really good approximation for the tops of the blue bins for the case of large n. Okay, so here we've given a qualitative description of the behavior of a random walk, but we've left out a lot of details. In particular, we've left out the mathematical derivations of these results. So here we'll point to places where more information can be found. A mathematical derivation of the probability distribution for the random walk, the results we showed here in blue, can be found in the video The Random Walk, available on this channel. If you'd like to see how, for large n, the random walk can be approximated by using a Gaussian distribution, we'd recommend From the Random Walk to the Gaussian Distribution, also available on this channel. If you'd like to know more about the Gaussian distribution, you might want to check out the videos in the Gaussian Statistics playlist. Also, the random walk is very closely related to the binomial distribution. If you would like to know more about the binomial distribution, you may want to check out the Binomial Statistics playlist. Okay, now let's summarize. Here we've given a qualitative description of the behavior of a random walk. We've left out the mathematical details, but given some pointers to where those details can be found. We'll be interested in using the random walk to think about measurement uncertainties in later videos.